The red coat. A year ago, Butlin's boss, Tony Marshall, spent a week as a red coat to help transform his company. I'll show you the graffiti that's on my wall. This June, he went back to see if his changes had worked. But first, what happened then? Tony Marshall has been brought in to save a legend, Butlins. The new managing director is determined to kill off Butlins' Heidi High image. He's spending £140 million on a total makeover. These two holiday villages give us more than 1,000 new apartments, sleeping up to 5,000 guests. We made accommodation a top priority for 1998. Now, to find out if it's really working, Marshall is leaving his wife Susan behind to work as a redcoat over a bank holiday weekend. But how will he cope with angry customers? It looks like a council flat. It looks like somebody's back shed. The food. If you're a customer, would you want to eat this? Yeah. No. And the nighttime activities. We're reinventing Butlins. We want to totally revitalise this product. It's, it's the most famous holiday company in this country. When we take holidays, we always go abroad. Bookings are down probably because the people that they're wanting to attract, the family, like us, don't, don't know about it. And if they do know, the only part they've seen is, is maybe the bad parts. Me going down to Minehead to work as a red coat is probably the best way to find out what the public want. Butlin's Minehead in Somerset is Europe's second largest holiday centre after Disney. It's halfway through a two-year transformation with new attractions and modernised accommodation. But major work has stopped for the summer. Here we are. This is it. And we're going to spend £40 million on our revitalization of this particular site. Um, it's our most profitable site and it's our most successful site as well, probably because of the area it's set in. But profits are down and Marshall is gambling that his huge investment will attract new customers. If I've got it wrong, and it is my vision, then it will probably cost me my job. Are you ready for this? I'm holding my breath. OK, here we go. The red coat. Now. Pocket. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Improperly oh. dressed. Handkerchief. Oh, handkerchief. Come here. Help That's me. quite good, actually. And I thought I knew how to fold a hanky. You probably know how to fold a normal hanky. <laughs> yeah, but... This is, <laughs> this is a button. <laughs> this is a red coat hanky. Seventy red coats work here looking after the customers and performing in the stage shows. Previous Reds include Cliff Richard, Michael Barrymore and Jimmy Tarbuck. Bank Holiday Friday and 8,000 new guests are arriving in just a few hours. Marshall's first job is to help welcome them in. But he soon senses all is not well. Have you sent any details about where you need to check in? No, she just said find Gullivers. Find Gullivers. Mm. You know where you're going? No, I've got no idea. You got your check-in papers? No, I've never got a reference. We, are, we only phoned up. All right, well, then what you'll have to do is go to the man in the white shirt with the uh, security. Yeah. He'll probably be able to tell you what to do then. All right, okay. Then. The new recruit is becoming increasingly concerned. People are turning up here at the gate without any identification. Yes, common one. Yeah, but I mean, that means that anybody could just turn up. That's a long gone problem, that one. Really? I've always said that it's the easiest thing to get into Butlins on an intake day. We're not even on a computer on the main entrance. So what we get is four young lads come down tomorrow. They say they're going to join the rest of the family. We send them down to customer services. They well, go around the bend and that's them meeting their friends. It's very I'm glad easy. I was here for this. Yeah, it's a very, very, very easy one. Once through the gate, it's check-in time for those who've paid. Word is quickly spreading among staff that the boss is working as a redcoat, but the customers never find out. Marshall calls on a new arrival who's having a problem. Start off with, I went to make the bed up. The bed doesn't fit at all. Okay. Right? Yeah. That bit's broken. Completely broken. I mean, 
Went to make some sandwiches for something to eat. Got no table. Sounds really, really petty. No, but it's only me after a really long drive. I'll come into the bedroom. Oh, the bed hasn't been made. I mean, I know you're going to get stains and things on it, but it's not very nice now, no, and that's just no, going to be covered up. Yeah. I mean, that was all for me to sleep on. Oh, <laughs> God, I really don't like to. I mean, I've been coming here no. 14 years. If 14 years here. If and... something's wrong, we'd rather you told us about yeah. it. With more than half of the accommodation still to be modernised at the end of the season, there are bound to be some complaints. The few unhappy guests congregate at customer services. Condition of our room, the shower curtains hanging off. It's terrible. The smell is, of must is, is unreal. Mm -hmm. the, there's, there's cigarette burns all over the floor and the carpet and the couch. And there's a picture of, of what we booked, and it's nothing like what, 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 we, what we're paying okay, well, for. Let me come in We've with... been in there for over half okay, an hour. Let me come in and see if I can find out what's happening. Come on, guys. There's another gentleman with the same complaint. And also, it's totally inadequate. Yeah. It's like terrible. Children. You can't put, you can't, in the brochure. No, you can't put children in them rooms. No. Marshall goes into the back office to find out why everything is taking so long. Inside, the customer services team are trying to cope, but with very limited resources. Everyone's trying to get through now. They have to go through this allocations office and they've only got two lines, you see, so... Thanks, Julie. I've got John for you. Julie? I've got a gentleman who says there's someone already in his room. Can you go round and have a look? Can you get back to me as soon as you can? Bye. <coughs> are we on a callback? Yes. How many accommodation units are there? Two and a half thousand? Two and a half thousand. Yeah, More two and a half thousand. 2,700. Yeah. yeah. Customer services? There's two phone lines. Obviously, with 8,000 people checking in, they're going to be busy. Yeah. <laughs> Marshall returns to the fray. I asked for the best accommodation, and if that's it, certainly won't sleep in what? Pardon? I certainly won't sleep in the uh, chalet that I saw. All right, well, I'll hang around here. Yep. Right, I'm not going anywhere. Okay. I will wait until you sort it it's out. It's just so, you know, we've had a long trip, and then, you know, it's nearly five o'clock. OK, where have you travelled from? From Carpentry. Dive in. The family have found new accommodation. Oh, yes. Again, you know, apologies. Yeah. Well, this is great. Hope you enjoy uh, the rest of your holiday. Now it's showtime, but can he perform? Sing that note for me. Oh. Take a nice deep breath. Oh. I think we should move on to the dance. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is going to be both embarrassing and difficult. No, Caroline, to dancing, please. <laughs> Marshall spent his career working his way up through the nightclub business. The last time he was on stage was as a DJ more than 30 years ago. Now, to his horror, he's been told he will be in the big bank holiday redcoat show. Like most Butlin staff, Marshall will live on site. He asks about the facilities. Staff laundry at five hours and nothing is dry. None of the machines work. There's 1,500 staff and six washing machines. Yeah, fridges would be nice. We don't have fridges. Don't you have any cooking facilities yeah. at all? This is awful. We're just going to moan to you all week. Which is my room? Uh, this is it. Home sweet home. Oh. <laughs> Do I have to sleep on there? <laughs> no, but you can lie on it and pretend. Good night, Francis. Good night. Bank holiday Saturday. Marshall is on breakfast duty. Morning. Good breakfast. Lovely. Yes. Plenty. You big guys, you need a good breakfast, don't you? <laughs> hey. Breakfast in full flow here. Are the portions being big enough? Well, I think so. Yes, I think they're yeah. generous. Yeah, and, very good. And the quality is okay. Yes, we've no, no complaints, no have complaints. we? No complaints. No. You want to ride on my back into here? Yeah. Come on, get on then. Go on then. Marshall's mission is to turn Butlins into a paradise for the family. He's spending millions on attractions for children, including Toyland. Can I wear your cap? During the day, the red coats keep the kids happy. Francis! Captain! Oh, yes! <laughs> yes! It's too fast for me, is this? You steering? Come on! Yo! Oh, dear! I could get sick on this. I've only just had me tea. Have you just had tea as well? Yeah. If you're sick, you've got to do it that way, not on me, OK? I don't want you being sick on me. Next stop, the staff laundrette. I spoke to some of the other staff yesterday about this facility, and um, 
Yeah. They were complaining about it. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to tell me what the problems are? The washing it machine. Long. Does it? Why? Because you're in it for about three hours doing your washing and you're dry. Is that because they're old machines? Yeah. The washing machines, half of them don't work and they don't wash your clothes properly. Do you have to no, put money in? You don't. So they are free? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Marshall is becoming concerned about morale among his 1,300 Minehead employees. Staff turnover is high and he wants to find out more from his new roommates. We pay for, you know, board here and yeah. here. We pay for the electricity. We pay for the heating, so it all comes out of our wages. But we've been told not, you know, what not to have. We're not allowed fridges. All you're allowed is a kettle. You get home, you're dehydrated and you're hungry. And if you want a cup of tea, you try and have a cup of tea with some milk, but it's all gone off because it's, it's been, been so warm. Strong. I would just like to be able to come home at the end of a, a shift at work and be able to make myself something to eat. It's a sensitive issue if I ask you to say what you get. With, it's um, 120 take home for me. Um, last year I was on 90. I take it you must be on reasonable. I will tell you that I'm paid more than £100,000 a year. It's back to work for the new recruit. We meet the star of the show, and I've been told I have to introduce him on stage, and I'm already desperately dying of nerves. Oh, you are comparing this evening. Oh, God, yeah. Your face is ever so familiar. Yeah. Hey, were you in last year? <laughs> no. Have a word about the toilets, love. No, very hard to. <laughs> I have to take my own tissues in the toilet. Bobby Davro doesn't know Marshall's the boss. How long have you been working here for, then? As a I've been in Butlins for 15 months. 15 months? Yeah. Ooh, he <laughs> you stayed this long, have you? <laughs> now, I haven't anything planned because I was told about two minutes ago that I was oh, actually right. going to be introducing you. Yeah. They've decided to leave this as a surprise for me. How many jokes have you got in your repertoire? No. None. None. Impressions, right? A bit of Frank Spencer. Dead easy. This is a real old one. Right? <laughs> Everyone starts with Frank Spencer. Just stand like that. Though. Just stand like that. Hand down like that. It's got a, oh, it's quite limp-wristed there. Hey, <laughs> handsome. And just, uh, mm, bitty. I'm having a bit of trouble. Mm, bitty. I'm having a bit of trouble. See, Mark, <laughs> he's, a, he's a natural. He's a natural. Let me have a little practice. We have a very special night to you, for you tonight. We have appearing here on this stage Give him a big warm welcome. Yes, it's Bobby Davro. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> terrible. I want to get this right. You keep practicing. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Put your hands together. Let's have a Broadway welcome. Britain's top comedian, Bobby Davro. Bank holiday Sunday. Marshall has just spent £7 million on a new swimming pool, Splash Water World. But there's a problem. The children's paddling area is closed, as the pool manager explains. We've drained it off twice so we can bleach all the area because the workmen have walked every bit of cement, grout and everything else through the area. They were saying that this is how you've given us, we're giving you back in the same state. I didn't even know that this wasn't open. I mean, as we, I came round there, I looked, I had to do a double take. We had to close it from day one. I can't so believe actually, that this company have done such a crap job. Well, Marshall stops to admire his star pool attraction, the £450,000 Master Blaster. It's a great ride. It's leaking. Vince, you've got a leak there, you've got a leak there, 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 there. We were assured that it was going to be done last Wednesday and Thursday, just didn't come in and do it. When I get back to the office, this for me is an absolute top priority to chase up. Someone has got to give me some answers on this one. I'm not happy. Lunch is in the staff restaurant. What's the food like? Dreadful. The food, the food is really terrible. Does it get any better or is it like this all the time? You don't get anything variety or anything. And it's, it's just exactly the same. Rib off chips all season. Do we, we don't get the same as the customers then? No. No, no way. Near it. If you're a customer, do you want to eat this? No. No. From what I've seen of school dinners, this is even as good as school dinners. Robin, what do you do? I'm stuffed cook. You're the cook. What yeah. do you think? I've had better. 
Yeah. I've had a lot worse. What stops you from being able to give the staff better food? Uh, the management. We have to go by the menu boards. Yeah. Do you order the food or not? No. We just cook it and serve it. If we allow more per head, could we serve them with a better menu? Of course, because I mean, as far as I'm aware, the allocation at the moment is only 33p a day. A day? 37 pence. 37 pence. Every time a day. you come in for a meal. A day? Yeah. For a member of and staff. 37 pence for your breakfast and 37 pence for your dinner. All oh, right. So it works out like about a pound one a day. Pound the new red coat is shown the kitchens. This is where it all happens. Are these the kitchens for the customers as well? Yeah, everything's cooked from here. So you prepare all the food for the customers yeah, yeah. and for the staff in here. Just tell me something. Before I arrived, were there any tablecloths on in that dining room? No. Oh, some of the truth. No. no. We are told that it was only because I was coming that you were going to get I wasn't told anything. I was just seeing them doing it. Have you done anything else for my trip? We haven't, no. Not staff yeah. cooks, no. Well, I didn't think by what was the food we were saving that we changed the menu. No. We should, do you think we should change the menu? I think there should be a lot more choice. Yeah. We only get told what to put out. A catering supervisor arrives. Tell me, what do you think for the meals that we serve for the staff? Well, I can't grumble because I eat them. Yeah. Honestly, I eat them. I like because I like salads and things like that, and so, I eat them. Oh, the, the salads are okay, but you, you can't get lettuce wrong, can you? <laughs> oh, I think that's a little bit unfair. I yeah. Think, yeah. Well, I, I'm judging I it on the meal so. I've just had in there. It's pretty horrible. And going around the centre talking yeah. to some of the staff, saying that the meals leave something to be desired. Well, I can't... Honestly, I'm not just saying it because you're yeah. here. But you eat I'm, staff meals? Yes, yeah, I do. And you're happy with them? Yeah. Marshall summons the general manager, Brian Leaker, and catering boss, Graham Plant. Tell me, first of all, these nice tablecloths. All the staff think it's a joke because they're saying they were put on for my benefit, were they? Um, I think the reality is that it's, it's been our desire to, to improve the, the ambience in the diner, uh, and it's something we wanted to do. I think the fair answer is yes, they were brought in uh, earlier than probably planned. It's not just a tablecloth. It's what goes on this tablecloth in terms of the food, because yeah. um, that's the biggest criticism. The food cost allowance is 66 pence per meal. Um, no, I was told it was 37. Absolutely not. 66 oh, pence per meal. It was chef Robin who told me that, so that's not true? No. No. 66 pence per meal. £14 per week. Tell me, why can't they have the same as what the customers have? Uh, food costs must be the... That's the primary reason, I'm sure. In, in budget, how much per head do we have for meals in there? Um, I believe it's about £16. Pound. £16. Pounds. Yeah. So the difference between what we pay for staff and what we pay for budget customers is two pounds a week. I believe so, yeah. Because I've eaten in budget and there's not a lot wrong with budget. Uh -huh. Rehearsal time again. One of Butlin's great attractions is the free and lavish nightly entertainment. Marshall's worried he's going to ruin the act. Hi. <laughs> I get nervous just coming in this room, never mind going on the stage. <laughs> I will just die. It's the thought of doing it wrong on the stage. You just think, sod it, I'm going to go out there and enjoy this. Bank holiday Monday and Marshall's last day as a redcoat. It starts well. His first improvement has arrived. Well, it's changed a bit, as you can see. Ah! It's still changing. What are you looking for? So, we've got one, two, three, four extra machines. Yep. Come on. How many out of ten do we get for this? A lot better, but you could do not being greedy with these machines all along. You're suggesting it'd be a good idea if the boss came down more often? It would, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Happier. Marshall gets back into the swing of being a redcoat. I'm going to remember this for the rest of my life. <laughs> oh, I'm in trouble. I've got my hands in my pockets. <laughs> I'm exhausted, said Noddy. Most guests at Butlins have a great holiday. Many come back year after year after year. 
but each check-in day, a few of the thousands of guests say that what greets them puts them off coming back to Butlins for life. Fingers crossed, I hope you're in the new accommodation. Not everyone can have the modernised accommodation. My dispute is I've booked a holiday. This is the first time I've been here, and I booked it on the understanding that the pictures that were in this brochure is exactly where I was going to be staying, and I haven't got that. No, we've never said that. So... Show me. Does it, does it or does it not say? Right. You're wrong. What your brochure says, you, you put out uh, 60 or 100 million yeah. pounds you spent on these yeah, places. Yeah. And it quite does honestly, say it. they're absolute oh, crap. Just a minute, let me, let me just read this for you. It says that, deluxe look. accommodation. Uh, sorry, no, this is not, not the deluxe. What that says is what, you're, what you put in that newspaper yeah. adverts. It's everywhere, it's in the newspaper, in the sun, on the TV, the in the news brochures. of the world. What, actually what you're saying, you've not upgraded actually what you them. And what you're saying, the, really, what they. No, they are, they're absolute crap. You want to go and see mine, they, they stink. Yeah, they absolutely, says, I wouldn't put a dog in mine. Okay. So. It says that the first phase of the investment is complete. It doesn't say that the whole investment is it complete. It actually states that it'll be finished in summer... Sorry, it actually states that it'll be finished in 1998. Complete modernised interior for 1998. And if you read it through, it actually states that Honestly, it'll be finished by June this what year. What do we know what phases are? What we've that. been drawn to is you have upgraded accommodation. Come and see us. Well, we've, we've changed. Well, you haven't changed done. at all. You You're still the same. Thing. I got told, yes, it's all been upgraded. Mine head is a new thing. Mine head is a new thing, and it's not what I've got. The travel agent couldn't promise you that. No, but then, it's it's actual butlins. When we phone butlins up, I can't do any more than what's written in the brochure. We have qualified in the brochure that not all the accommodation is complete. I didn't get it from brochure. When I phoned up butlins, they said it's all been refurbished. That's exactly what they said to me. And I paid an extra, I don't know what it was, 35, 39 pounds just upgrading, right? Mister's giving us false information. You're too happy, Mister. You want to sort them out. Right. The national you're quite right. right. They're probably being told. Yeah. They're being yeah. told wrong. About you have been given some false information, yeah. probably, yeah. yeah. And all I will, all, basically, all I want to do is get me money back and run. It's not personal, it's not personal. No, I know. Right. Well, do you want to come round to the room I've got now? And okay. I'll show you right, the graffiti that's Let's on my wall. Let's go around. I'll show you the graffiti that's on my wall. Let's go around. One of the problems that Butlins has is that the allocation system cannot identify new and old. So, so no one could be guaranteed new accommodation this year. Still unaware Marshall's the boss, she shows him in. Um, this doesn't look like the accommodation that I've asked for in the well, brochure. Well, this is from it. It's not identical. It's not the new accommodation that's in the brochure. I mean, it's not... Tremendously dissimilar to that. It is to that. Although the centre is packed, the family have found another apartment. All right. Is the sheets and stuff, will they get changed? Have they, they been do. changed? Yeah. If um, they haven't been changed, like they will be changed, yes. But no sooner does Marshall leave than confusion starts over who has been allocated what. Other people have been in here, they've got to come and clean it out. I've just been put into this one. Oh no, we've got God, this one. I've just, been, seven. Oh, I've just been put into number eight. We've just cancelled such a mess and we just cancelled it. They told us how nice it would be, we'd be all done out and happy we'd come here. Well, I can, assure you, I can assure you of this, I don't hear how much money they've spent on this butlins. They haven't done nothing here. Now, now, I'm telling you this now, I will never come to no, butlins no, again. But to my family, they're breaking their hearts. I'll, I'll, never, I'll never even come near butlins again, I'll advise my family not to as well. You've got to go back to Bristol now. <laughs> Kids are disappointed. Oh, it's just disgusting. I'll come again, never. Come on. Meanwhile, Marshall seeks reassurance. The vast majority of the 10,000 guests on site are happy. Oh, yeah! How's the accommodation? Uh, all right. Uh, yeah? yeah? Happy with it? Yeah. No problems? No. no. Found anything wrong? No. 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 no, we've been coming for about 12 years. Have you? Yeah. Five times one year we came, didn't we, Bob? Yeah. And we got two more booked for this year. Oh, you're coming three times this year, yeah. then? Yeah, we got two more booked. It's the big night, and Marshall is feeling very nervous. In less than an hour, he will be dancing on this stage in front of an audience of two and a half thousand. We'll be there for him. We'll shout the moves out. He's not got to worry. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, he'll be fine, as long as he keeps smiling. And step, click, step, click. Yeah, it's coming in, I'm dying. How are you feeling? Terrible. 
them, I'll do it. All you've got to remember is go out there, be calm about it, go out there and enjoy yourself. This is worse than facing the rank main board when I made a presentation to ask them for 140 millions to spend, spend on butlings because I've been trained to do that. This I haven't been trained for. When I fall in love, it's gonna be forever. Let me go, because if you don't, you'll make me worse. This side. Back at Butlin's headquarters, Marshall summons his senior team. The whole experience has been just mind-blowing. It really has. This insight that I've had, it is an opportunity I am not going to waste because I've just seen too much and learnt too much. You're all going to be doing it. You may not be red coats. I mean, you know, we could have, for instance, Ian on gardening. <laughs> Nick on litter picking. Excellent, excellent, yeah. There. And you... I have the perfect job for you. Oh, no. Oh, no. What am I in now? You are going to go work in customer services. <laughs> because I will tell you I've been in there and I was up to my neck in guano. Yesterday, when I was there, we had 32 customer complaints. I think there must have been about the most six, maybe seven members of staff in there all falling over one another because the area is not big enough. The staff are working as best they can, by hand. Mm -hmm. You know, the, they're working from telephones and notes. Why haven't we got an IT system for it? I don't know, but I shall find out. And I'm going to go and spend some time down there and experience it firsthand. We're so behind with IT. Everything's got to be linked. The guy in the gate doesn't have a system. So that could mean that we've got two or three hundred people staying on centre that don't even exist on our guest list. So we have a, we've got a loophole in the system. Yeah that I think people are taking advantage of. Moving on, why can't we give the staff the same as we give the customers in the budget dining room? There's no reason as to why we can't. Um, if we were looking for limiting factors, the first one would probably be the cost. Two pounds difference. Is that per head? That's yes. two pounds, two per, pounds head per, per head week. difference per week. The thing that we've got to address is that we're investing today for the future, you know, and the pavilion and everything else as part of the 140 million. It's very hard to see the perceived benefit of spending an extra two pounds per head on upgrading the level of staff f feed. I don't agree with you. We want better staff in our centres. We want them to stay longer. It's, it's all this negative crap again. You know, it's, Butlins is going forward. And if there have been problems in the past, we've got to find solutions for the future. Building work has restarted, and all the accommodation should be modernised when Butlins reopens in the spring. Tony Marshall is also investing one and a half million in a computerised reservation system. Food for the staff has been improved, and he's bought the workforce 450 new fridges, which they've nicknamed Tony's. As the site closes for the winter, he's determined to speed ahead with the total makeover and turn Butlins into a modern family entertainment centre. This June, a year later, he returns to the newly reopened Minehead site. Since we opened in April, 100 of our senior management have actually been and worked for a week in Butlins. I feel quite excited about the prospect of arriving and seeing what I've created. Marshall has hired the engineers who designed the Millennium Dome to cover over a huge central area. Inside, he's splashed out on lavish family shows and kiddies entertainment. But will all the returning visitors approve? They got rid of the old stuff, but it was good. What, this goes? Yeah, all the clubs and that. Yeah. And they put down the new stuff, and um, it's not as good as the old stuff. How, how old are you? I'm 15. 15. So what you're saying is that we've it's missed out... Kids. Yeah, we've missed out something for the older teenagers. Yeah, and for the adults. Yeah. They used to have a lot of places up here. Hurricane Harris. How come they yeah. close that down? 
Well, because we didn't think that we would get the older teenagers coming back to Butlins. When we said it was a family entertainment resort and all of the facilities were going to be biased towards the family, we didn't think that older teenagers would actually still want to come here. So we closed the discotheque down. We opened at the beginning of May and we carried out the market research and we know that there is a gap with the older teenager. The staff canteen has been revamped. How's the food, guys? Can you recommend it? Because I'm just going to sample it. Which should I have? They now get the same food as the customers, but they have to pay. Strogan off for me, please. Oh, you've all had fish and chips, then. That's not healthy eating, you know. I wasn't pleased with anything. <laughs> Why? It wasn't very nice. That's what we give the customers, though, isn't it? Food poisoning. Oh, I don't, I don't think so. There's nothing wrong with this. If you could eat it. I'm going to eat it. Were you here last year? Oh, last year. Yeah. Has the food improved since last year? No. What? Should be a more range of um, menu. Was like the other week I came in here and ate to it up to a lasagna three times on the truck. Yeah, because the I've been told about this. The problem is because there isn't a variation on the guest menu yeah. because guests change every week. Now that we put you on the same menu as the guests you don't get a big enough variation. So what we need to do then is to bring back perhaps some of the variation that we had before, but at a better quality than what we had before. Marshall knows there's still more work to be done to make the staff entirely happy. But what do the customers think of the refurbished accommodation? Just making sure it's OK. It's lovely, thank yeah? you. What do you think of the accommodation? Very nice. Thank so you've had a good look at what you've got. Yes, it's very nice. He's pleased to find many happy customers. But will his one and a half million pound reservation system have transformed customer, now renamed guest, services? Just checking in? No. Just it's, going out? It's been a mistake. Oh, what's wrong? <laughs> when we booked it, we booked it to be together. Yeah. And <laughs> you wish you never come to me. No. <laughs> And consequently, <laughs> my friend's there and we're here, over here and we both have the central location, ground floor. And I'm not happy. So we've got you apart. Oh, we can make you happy. That's not well, a problem. that's good. They've now got seven phone lines and eight computers. But inevitably, there are still some delays. The customers have said they've been waiting out there for 50 minutes. 50, 50 minutes? Yeah. I've just got all of it now from one of the girls. This is the two, the two families yeah. who have been split up. Yeah. And I mean, we're not full, so we should be able yeah. to put we'll them together. Yeah, we'll just so we're yeah. just doing it. Yeah. Okay, I'll go tell them. As I went in, on the phone dealing with it, the problem is that they have to ring through to allocations and they've got to reallocate the accommodation because we don't want you to get there and find that there's someone else in that accommodation. But there's no problem, they've got the spare accommodation. Well, I think the changes in Butlins are so dramatic that perhaps we have taken out a little bit more uh, than we should have done. You always have to be honest about this with yourself, then you have to quickly um, repair whatever damage may have been caused. We are constantly on a journey. We have made that quantum leap, which I wanted to do, and the changes are just immense, and I think appreciated by the vast majority.